Tencent is pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into PUBG Mobile Esports, Paraboy makes his case that he's the best player in the world, and the Clash Royale League action is heating up with the Western League Finals. But why are so many players retiring? The Peacekeeper Elite Championship took place this last weekend, one of the biggest mobile esports events ever. We're talking about a $1.8 million prize pool with the best teams in the world, a lot of them, flying out to China in order to take place in this live event. Uh, it was absolutely beautiful. The venue was rocking. We're going to throw up some pictures about that here. Um, and the competition did not disappoint either. We, we had some of the behemoths of the Chinese PUBG mobile scene with 4AM and NVXQF, uh, Nova Esports, uh, coming out to represent China and then going against some of the other top teams in the world like footballists, like T1. A couple strong NA teams with Wildcard and Tempo Storm. Um, it was an incredible competition to watch over a, a two-day event, and uh, it ended up that NVXQF took the prize uh, of seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for winning the the event, and Paraboy as well took home the MVP. So he is very quickly solidifying himself as the best player in the world for PUBG Mobile. Um, there's was a bit of discussion coming into this event. This definitely helped solidify his narrative as the best in the world. And uh, we're actually going to be able to see him again in the PMGC later uh, this year as well. That's going to be an amazing event. I cannot wait. Uh, one thing that was still lacking a bit from this event is the representation from the Southeast Asia teams, the Bigatrons, the RRQs. And we're going to get all of that at the PMGC. That's going to be incredible to watch as well. Another $2 million event. And that's the type of investment that I just love to see from Tencent. They really do so much the right way in mobile esports and, and leaning into it. Um, they just recently announced actually a hundred million dollar investment in order to bring the game back to India um, and build the infrastructure of the scene in that region. So that's a huge amount of money and it's going to go a long way in that region as well. Um, they just also announced plans for the P, uh, Peacekeeper Elite League next year, the Chinese version of the game next year with a $30 million investment as well. And they started even a regional uh, franchise league in Japan for for the game. So love this type of very specific, very intense focus on esports in all these different regions around the world. Um, they've also launched a mobile esports studio uh, in Katowice, Poland. So that uses a really creative mobile first layout for the venue, which I also love to see. Um, so, so much going right uh, for the PUBG mobile space right now, especially with games like Peacekeeper Elite continuing to take off. Uh, still waiting to confirm the viewership numbers from this last event, but it looked like it may have gone over a million. I'm going to put an asterisk on that, though, until we can verify it. Um, but wanted to make sure to get this episode out soon. Uh, but what an amazing event. Can't wait to see more coming soon from PUBG mobile later this year. A big weekend in Clash Royale esports as the CRL West playoffs kicked off. Now, this was consequential not just for who's going to become the Western champions, but also which four teams are going to qualify for the Worlds event next month. There were six teams in this playoff. The top four will make the Worlds event. Now, there was controversy also in the last regular season match of the CRL West uh, season where Space Station ended up losing in a somewhat controversial fashion in order to go against Pain in the playoffs. If they had won, they would have gone against Cream Royale Betis. Now, some people said that they tanked intentionally in order to choose Pain as an opponent. Space Station came out and said, hey, we're just playing for fun, but they didn't seem to have that same intensity and, and drive to win that they are so known for. Um, but wow, did Pain make them pay for it seemingly. Uh, they ended up beating Space Station in the first round of the playoffs in order to qualify for Worlds. Um, Queso ended up knocking off Cream Royale Betis to go against Tribe in the semifinal round. Um, and in this match, there was also a bit of an upset. So while Queso, of course, is no slouch, uh, all of the casters ended up voting for Tribe in, the, in a poll for who would win. And Tribe, of course, is one of the most stacked rosters in CRL West. Definitely the favorites, uh, one of the favorites to win this region. But Queso really came out in convincing fashion, one in 2v2 over Tribe's duo, which are known to be also very good in 2v2. Um, and Ruben, 
been pulled through as well for the squad. Ruben, of course, is known as being one of, if not the best 1v1 player uh, in Clash Royale right now. And on the other side of the bracket, SK ended up going over Pain in the semifinals in order to have a repeat of the 2018 CRL EU finals, SK versus Queso. Now, this is uh, definitely a, a rivalry with some history. Queso, back in 2018, ended up sweeping SK 6-0 to zero in three straight sets in order to win uh, the first ever CRL EU championship. Um, that was quite a time. It was a different game back then. This is back when my squad was in the NA finals as well. Uh, but this is definitely a historic rivalry. I know Morton especially wants some revenge, and I can't wait to see Morton versus Ruben. I hope we get that 1v1 matchup as well. Um, Morton, of course, being one of the most versatile players in that conversation as well for best in the world right now. He's just so good at 2v2 and 1v1. Um, and then Ruben, of course, just being a 1v1 player that's really carried Queso up to this point. People joke that it's Ruben Esports, you know. Um, but this is going to be a great event kicking off next weekend uh, with the, both the third place match and the finals being played next weekend. The competition this weekend was also clouded by doubt over what the future of this esport has in store. After Space Station ended up losing to Pain, a lot of the members ended up putting out these vague tweets about how this is the end, or how they've been so fortunate to have these careers up to this point, but it, it was unclear about whether or not that was continuing. And then shortly after that, Surgical Goblin himself ended up announcing his retirement uh, from the competitive side of Clash Royale, and his focus more so on Fortnite content. So this is really a consequence of the fact that we still don't really have answers about what the format in 2021 is going to look like. There have been a lot of rumors circulating. I'm sure a lot of these listeners here have heard already, but this is probably going to be the end, uh, or so it seems, of the team-based competition uh, for Clash Royale, and that it might be transitioning to an individual format, we still don't know. Um, but for a lot of players especially, there's this thing in the back of their head that's like, wow, am I still going to have a job next year by doing this professionally? So I really hope that we get answers, but I have to say it was so surreal watching Clash Royale Esports this past weekend because it's such an engaging eSport. The broadcast has been really streamlined, the casters are very professional, and the team-based competition, there are so many stories and, and rivalries that have developed. We talked about how SK and Keza are going into a rematch of the first ever CRL EU Championship, and the two premier players, Morton and Ruben, and it's just so unclear what this is going to look like in a different type of format in 2021, because we are so used to team-based competition up to this point. So, um, as somebody that is just cares so much about about Clash Royale esports. I really want to see the best for this scene. And, uh, you know, I, I may possibly come out with a longer segment just having more of a constructive take on the esports side of this game. But um, all of us are just really eagerly awaiting more information. And we hope, even if it does switch to an individual format, that there's job security in this for a lot of people because it is a livelihood for players, for, um, you know, staff members, and then also for content creators, right? Who are hoping to see a, a resurgence of the game from just a, a game state perspective. Um, so definitely a lot of unknowns right now on the esports side of Clash Royale, but for a title that's been a flagship mobile esport in the West for so long, a lot of us just have our fingers crossed and are hoping for the best right now. AC Milan announces they're entering into a partnership with Clash, spelled with a Q, in order to represent the football club in both FIFA and Brawl Stars. Now, Clash is one of the premier mobile esports organizations in Europe. They're based out of Italy, and this is a continuation of another trend that we've seen specifically in mobile, where football clubs end up partnering with organizations. Now, of course, we also see that with PSG, who also have a Brawl Stars team, in addition to Cream Real Betis that entered into a partnership earlier this year. So love seeing this kind of crossover. Obviously, this is something that I've had firsthand experience with, uh, with complexity in the Dallas Cowboys organization. There's a lot of benefits and learnings that can take place on both sides of this. So definitely love this. Excited to see AC Milan compete at the Brawl Stars World Finals. Three big news stories coming out of Brawl Stars recently. First of all, the last episode of Brawl Talk was a smashing success. They ended up getting 799,000 peak concurrent 
viewers. They almost hit 800,000. So close. Uh, next time, I think that they'll get it, though. Um, but they've just been doing a phenomenal job. YouTube as well, just supporting this and all their efforts in the mobile sports industry. It's just a phenomenal thing that's happening. If you're not following the Brawl Talk uh, YouTube series, make sure that you go back and watch it. They're just awesome game update sequences that end up converging the entire global community around the game at each of these uh, premieres. Secondly, Brawl Stars ended up succeeding in their crowdfunding efforts for the prize pool of the Brawl Stars World Finals. They ended up crowdfunding through the sales of an in-game item, actually, to support esports, and we will be having a million-dollar event for the Brawl Stars World Finals later this year. I love seeing that. First of all, that esports is brought into the game uh, in front of the average players, because that's not always common in the mobile esports industry especially, but then also that the player base of the game ended up seeing that, wanting to support the esports scene, and hit that threshold in order for us to have the million dollar prize pool. So two big wins from that perspective, just in the crowdfunding efforts. And lastly, I just wanted to throw this out uh, in this episode. Just take a look at what the Brawl Stars team has has been able to accomplish this year. Frank, the game lead for the game, ended up posting a short list of some of the success stories and accomplishments from this year, and it's just mind-boggling as far as how much that team has actually been able to accomplish. And a lot of these are like bullet pointed, but any one of these would just be like a smashing success uh, in any other game. You know, you look at the stuff in the top right under stuff, and it's like, yeah, Brawl Stars, Esports, and Challenges. Okay, that was done really well. Brawl Pass and Quest, continually putting in new content to the game. China launch, which was ended up ended up being very successful. Huge deal to be able to launch a game in such a massive market like China. And the map maker, which is another great feature. Um, I think we've only scratched the surface as far as what that is going to produce in the game. But anyway, just the sheer amount of volume of things that the team has been able to accomplish and the fact that much of this has gone really, really well. I uh, just wanted to give a huge shout out to the Brawl Stars team um, and being able to do this as well during a COVID year like this is just insane. Same. More huge viewership numbers coming out of Free Fire, this time for the Free Fire League Latin American Grand Finals. They ended up going over a million peak concurrent viewers on the YouTube broadcast, and Esports Charts announced that it was 1.25 million peak concurrence across all the platforms. So if you follow mobile esports around the world, you're probably not surprised at this point by the sheer number of people that are fans of Free Fire Esports. Also have to give a shout out to the Free Fire Latino Twitter account for their juicy memes as well in the Twitter replies. Mobile gaming has a new leader atop the charts of the highest grossing mobile game in the world. This spot was held by Honor of Kings for the longest time, and yet Genshin Impact, despite only launching about a month and a half ago, has now taken that number one spot. What an amazing job by Mihoyo about what they've done the last couple months. If you haven't checked out the game, make sure you do. It's a beautiful game, open world, great graphics. Uh, congratulations to Genshin Impact for taking this number one spot. A lot of sponsorship news coming out of the mobile esports industry. Burberry and Honor of Kings are going to be working together to do some creative integrations in China for Burberry as a luxury brand. Definitely expect to see a lot of vibes of the Louis Vuitton integration with League of Legends. Now, Honor of Kings also recently announced that they're still getting massive amounts of players, uh, up to 100 million daily active users for that game, which after all of this time is still just insane. Qualcomm and Mountain Dew are going to be partnering with Tencent for the PUBG Mobile Global Championship event. These two companies, of course, have been supporting mobile esports for quite a while. I'm excited for them to be coming together and supporting one of the largest events in mobile esports to date. Also, a couple creative event sponsorships, Xiaomi and MediaTek, are going to be putting together an Arena of Valor uh, tournament in Brazil specifically. And then also One Esports is going to be working with Mobile Legends to do an invitational event converging some of the larger independent teams in regions in Southeast Asia altogether in one invitational. So excited for that as well. 